Hey guys, Zoeb here from OneGlanceTrader.com and I'm excited to share with you the next part of my trading journal, the RSI MTF EA. And I'll be honest, I've been waiting to do this episode because, you know, I want to show you not only when this particular EA gets into trouble, but when any EA kind of gets into trouble and how I kind of deal with it. And to be honest, it's um, the last like, week or this whole week has been relatively good very quiet ea keeps taking trades keeps winning trades and it didn't really get me into any trouble um and until today so again i'm not 100 percent sure if there was any news events or anything like that but you can see here that i've got four open trades on the usd jpy and um They've all gone against me. So you can see the four trades here. Um, and now I want to show you, because I'm actually quite close to my setup happening in terms of how I then get involved to um, kind of get myself out of trouble, really, on this situation. So before I do that, I just wanted to quickly show you where we are in terms of the account. Um, so the balance is £80 up, so I started with £1,000 in the account, uh, so it's 8% up, and I started on the 27th, 28th of February, so, you know, not even a month yet, and, you know, we're up 8%, yeah, we're in a bit of drawdown at the moment, minus £23, I could close out all these trades and be 5% up, 6% up for... Uh, for the three weeks or whatever it is, um, but I'm not going to do that. So again, full disclosure before anyone says this is on a demo account um, because it's a brand new EA and I want to kind of uh, test this uh, EA, forward test it uh, before I start to put real real money inside. So, um, so yeah, so this video is really focusing on when the EA kind of gets into trouble or when the system gets into trouble. Um, what can I do about it and you know kind of kind of really go from there so there are three things I can now do at this stage I can either leave it and not do anything um, which when I do strategy backtester obviously I can't get involved so I could just leave it you can see now that it is reversing and starting to go it's broken probably hitting that trend line there um, depending on how you want to draw the trend line um, on there but you can see now that it has done a kind of pull up to the upside there so you know these kind of open trades here are minimal drawdown and this first trade that was created all the way back up here uh, you know uh, in the morning um, is nowhere is nowhere near to be seen so uh, it literally kind of didn't even get to the spread it just literally just went the opposite way so I now could just leave it and not do anything, um, which is not what I want to do. Well, it is what I want to do because I don't really want to do anything because the whole point of this is to be as hands-off as possible. But I want to kind of use this example to show you guys what I do. Um, option two is close it out completely. Like I said before, I'm up £80, 8%. Um, and I could close these down and be 5.6% up for you know the first three weeks. I've got no problem with that. We wouldn't want to make 5% return or nearly 6% return in in three weeks. So, you know, I could do that, but I'm not going to do that. Um, what I'm going to do instead um, is do a manual trade um, to try to get myself out of trouble as quick as I can. Because the thing is, is... If I left it and let it do any, let it do what it needs to do, the net effect of this would be 0.1%, so to make one pound effectively. That is the net effect of doing this um, <clears throat> uh, EA. But if I gave you the option, is you, if you could just wait and let it just all play out, or we could negate this twin minus 23 pounds without affecting or you know losing any of our current equity that we got, uh, got would you do it? And most people would say yes. So that's the bit uh, I quite like is I don't care about making a pound on the USD JPY or 0.1% anymore. I just want to get rid of this 24 pounds and I don't really want to eat up profit. I've already made to do that. So <clears throat> I'm going to quickly show you 
what I what I do and what I'm planning on doing. Uh, the setup is nearly there. It might not happen in this video. If it doesn't, I'll create another part showing you that kind of process. But what I want to show you is <clears throat> is 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 how and why I use this setup. So what I'm trying to do is minimize the uh, VPS and show you this. So this is something I mocked up again on the New Zealand dollar five minute. But again, you can use it on it happens all the time um, so as I've always said the RSI MTF indicator is an early warning system it doesn't tell you that it's definite price is going to reverse it can go against you and the example I just showed is is that exact example where it can it can go against you <clears throat> and this again is an example of where you get the signal it doesn't make your kind of five pips or your small take profit target and continues to go against you now in this example i would have just left it because it only probably would have opened one trade only so i'm not really that fussed but in this one it's gone against me by quite a lot of pips and i've got four open trades um so uh, but i'm just using this as a particular example so <clears throat> says the signal the price continues to go higher now what i'm going to do is i'm going to put um in this example a short entry another put another trade in but a manual trade at a slightly higher lot size and what that is going to do is it's going to reduce down the break even point and i probably should have explained that before i showed you this line um showed this screenshot so what I'm going to do, so there's this indicator called the average price indicator. You can just Google it. Um, I think it's from the MQL5 website. But what it does, it effectively shows <clears throat> where your break even point is in of all the open trades that you have open. So of these four trades, if price hits this blue line at 110.355, your PL would be zero. So you'll have two i'm guessing two in positive two in negative and they both will cancel each other out so my objective at this point is to get is to get price to this break-even point now how many pips away is that uh, it's about 40 points away now if i opened another trade at a slightly higher lot size what will happen is this average price will go down. So every time I open a new trade in uh, in a buy while well, buy trade, this average price will keep dropping. Um, and this will all depend on how much margin you have inside the account of how big you can trade and and how f how far down it will do. And you can calculate all of that to work it out. I only want to you know do a lot size of 0.3 and this is how many pips is away, etc. But for this sake of argument, I'm not going to go into any of that. Um, I'm just going to show you the mechanics. So so that's the first thing just to uh, just to bear in mind so i want price to get to this blue line but i want to bring this blue line down as far as i possibly can while still maintaining some decent level of risk in case it does it, it doesn't get there <clears throat> um, so the question is is when do i get in so that's question number one now what i look for is effectively when the macd crosses below the zero line so what you'll find is, is when price has gone against you by such a long time the macd will always be in a but in this case because it's a, a buy trade uh, or an uptrend it will always be up there so if i go back and show you here <clears throat> you can see here that the m uh, the macd and the, and this is just the um i can't remember which um which line it is um will always be below here and what we do is we wait for it to go above or close above the zero line so in this case i think it has done that now so i might i'll do this live with you guys um it closes above the zero line so if i just go back and show this scenario here so when it crosses below in this example because it's going for a short the zero line you enter short here now what that's showing is the MACD every time for those who don't know if it crosses above and below the zero line um, it's, te it's telling you that the potential of the momentum has shift to the opposite side so in this example here the downside <clears throat> and, and watch what happens so price 
you know, assuming you get in at the worst case at this bottom price again, does go against you, does retrace, but then eventually does sell off. And what happens here in this example is that you do have confluence between, um, obviously you've got your RSI indicator as one signal, and then you've also got um, bullish and bearish um, um, divergence. So uh, bearish divergence, so I mean, so price making higher highs, MACD's making low, uh, lower highs, and therefore that gives us another signal that, you know, price more than likely the probability that it, it, it will reverse. So if I look now in <coughs> this scenario, is price has made lower lows, price still continues to make lower, lower lows here, but these last two points um, between this low and this low, the MACD is either flat, uh, is either flat in the lows or making higher lows. So therefore, giving us that kind of divergence that we're kind of uh, looking for here. So, just double checking if this last bar, uh, yeah, value three, 0.214. Okay, perfect. So, I'm now going to place a manual trade on this to get me to break even quicker. Um, on there. So the first thing that we do is we turn off the EA on this currency pair. So it's important that you go into the expert advisor, turn off live trading on this. So that's off. So now <clears throat> you'll see that it's got the sad smiley face, but because you've got auto trading on, all the other pairs will still have the smiley face on there. So therefore it will not it will not take any trades on the USD JPY anymore. You're you're in the you know you're taken off autopilot. You're now in the seat on there. So that's the first thing that we do is that we turn it off. The next thing that we do is that we open another buy trade. Now I really hope I've got enough margin to make this buy trade, which I'm sure I have, because I've got 462% um, on there. <clears throat> and what we need to do now is put it on at a slightly higher lot size than what we've got. So we've got the first one at 0.03. And the reason why this is different to the others, it takes 1% and rounds up. So we were opening trades at 0.02, but we started to now open trades at 0.03 because our account size is getting bigger. <coughs> and because our balance or our equity rather is dropping slightly, therefore it's opened it at slightly lower lot sizes going forward. So I'm going to do another trade at 0.03. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, so new order. 0.03. So now if we look at this now, the pointing with my thumb doesn't really help, um, that the average break even price is 111355. So what's going to happen when I hit buy, that blue line will drop slightly. So buy the market one more time, which is done. You can see there that it's now dropped to one more, it's a 355 to 263. Now that is now my break even price. So now I've made it drop by how many ever pips that is. Um, so the higher the lot size, the more that this would have dropped on there. But I've just gone with one more trade. Um, and again, as I get better at doing this, I, I d I've done it a number of times. And I need to get better educated in terms of how big of a lot size do I want to put in. <coughs> and I might need to use other factors in there to be able to kind of determine that. So now that we've done that, uh, the last thing we need to do is to make sure that we get out of this trade at break even is to change the take profit targets of, <coughs> sorry, of all these trades to 111. 0.263 so i'm going to do that and what you do that is the modify the order and if you had the ea turned on uh, this this wouldn't work so i was trying this before and i really was wondering why it wasn't working two six three oh, definitely not gone right there one one two six let's do six four okay Six, four. So what I'm going to do is easier thing is what I've learned is if you copy that, um, you can then just 
modify it. And now it is Friday, so this might not get to where I want to get to uh, before the market closes for the weekend, but we shall wait and see. So, and that's it. So when price hits uh, 110.264, it's changed again to 263. I'm not really sure why it keeps changing like that, to be honest. But um, <clears throat> we'll just leave it where it is at the moment. Um, 264. Then um, all the trades will close. Um, I'll get a notification on my phone that that's happened. Then I'll go back onto my VPS and turn the EA back on for this currency pair. And it will trade as normal. So this is the plan um, of... of of what I want to do. Um, good, I can show this to you live. I uh, wasn't expecting it to happen when I turned this on to, to get there that quickly, which is great. Um, and then I'll create the next video to show what happens, whether it hits it or just continues reversing against me, I will show you what happens. So then we can have a look and re-strategize on what is the next step to kind of get out of trouble. So really hope you enjoyed the video. Tune in for the next part.